I'm sure many of you watching are familiar with how hovercrafts work. They force air down underneath the fuselage, creating a pocket of high pressure air that they can float around on. And this allows them to slide over various different surfaces. But I'm also sure that many of you are wondering, what on earth is a Coanda effect hovercraft? The Coanda effect is the tendency for a fluid to flow around the outside of a curved surface. And I explored this Coanda effect in a previous video. Here's a short explanation of how the Coanda effect works. When air or any other fluid exits a nozzle at high velocity, it will pull surrounding molecules with it as it disperses into the stationary surrounding air. But when a surface is placed near to the flow, the air between the surface and the fast flow is dragged along with it. This causes a low pressure zone between the fast moving air and the surface, and the surrounding atmospheric air above it will push down on the flow, attaching it to the curved surface. If you haven't seen my previous Coanda effect video, I used the Coanda effect to redirect airflow around a dome to produce lift for a drone. In the end, I found it to be terribly inefficient. However, I did notice a very strong ground effect acting on the drone and said the following. It would be interesting to see if uh, this could be modified into almost like a ground effect uh, hovercraft, so a Coanda effect, ground effect hovercraft. Um, and also see whether that still requires uh, gyros for stabilisation uh, as hovercrafts don't require active stabilisation they just sit on a cushion of air above the ground. So here is a very basic cross section of a hovercraft. There is a fan up top which blows air down underneath the hovercraft and creates a pocket of high pressure air lifting the hovercraft off the ground. Now my plan is to redirect this downwards airflow to do a 90 degree turn and flow out horizontally above the hovercraft. Then using the Coanda effect, the air will flow round the curved surface and produce lift. Not only will the downwards moving air produce lift, but also the fast moving air above the hovercraft's curved surface will be at a lower pressure than the stationary air below the hovercraft, therefore producing lift, similar to an aircraft wing. Also, my second theory, which may or may not be correct, is to curve the surfaces through a full 180 degrees, in the hope that a small portion of the airflow will flow under the hovercraft and pressurise the underside of the fuselage, therefore creating a greater pressure difference between the top and the bottom and producing more lift. So here is the design. Two main lift fans are mounted to 3D printed brackets, which attach to an aluminium frame under the fuselage. This will keep them aligned and prevent any propeller collisions as I plan to build the red curve sections from foam board. This aluminium frame also acts as a strong mount for attaching the rear thrust motors high up and out of the Coanda effect zone. I haven't worked with foam board for a while and this is probably one of the most complex shapes I'll produce to date. So in order to get the angled sections correct, I used the sheet metal tool in Fusion 360 to make a template, which could be printed and used to trace parts onto the foam board. Each section was then covered in packing tape to make the surface smooth and also add some strength to the foam board, as well as adding some colour. Now because producing this curved shaped fuselage from sheet foam became repetitive very quickly, I kept entertained by listening to an audiobook called How to Build a Car by Adrian Newey via Audible, who are the sponsor for this project. It touches on many engineering fields, but I found the aerodynamic development of a Formula 1 car really interesting. An example was a decision whether to move the regulation nose cameras due to a trend of other teams doing so. But data from the computational fluid dynamics software conflicted with the data from the wind tunnel test. So they chose to run the test at the next race. One of the drivers didn't like the new mounting position and the other was non-committal. But the data showed that the new assembly was slightly up in overall aero load. This is really relatable to me as when I build such projects for YouTube, I always like to test things before coming to a conclusion. Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks and original audio shows. You can listen to Audible on the go, whilst doing CAD work or tinkering on your latest project. And if you want to sign up, go to audible.com forward slash Tom Stanton. Or if you're in North America, text Tom Stanton to 500 500 and start listening with an exclusive 30 day free trial one free audiobook of your choice, and two Audible originals, absolutely free. So thanks to Audible for sponsoring this project, and it's time to fire up the CNC.
The aluminium parts were cut from 2mm sheet aluminium and in total weighed about 163 grams. Once a top plate of foam was attached to the curved sections, the aluminium frame could be clamped to the foam board using two 3D printed rings. I then initially attached the motors directly to the aluminium frame as I wanted to test whether impellers would be enough to lift this craft. But the motors just weren't strong enough to drive them and became very hot at just 50% throttle. As each impeller took about 9.5 hours to print, plus weighing in at just under 100 grams each, I moved on quickly to using conventional propellers, which actually seemed very promising. Once the rear motors were attached and soldered up, I programmed my transmitter to control all four motors and it was ready for a test. Okay, here's the first test of the Coanda Effect hovercraft. Just gonna spin up the main lift motors to see if it, um lifts off the ground a bit. Definitely has enough thrust. That's about 50% throttle it starts to lift off. Let's see if we can get it moving forwards. Just got to get the right throttle control so it doesn't take off, but enough to reduce the friction. So let's try that. That works. I'm surprised this is working so well on grass. <laughs> I need to carefully tune how much thrust the main motors are producing so it doesn't want to take off too much. Just about there seems pretty good. Yeah, it's very top heavy. <laughs> right, so it's now the following day and I'm going to give this Coanda Effect hovercraft another test. I made a small modification to the motor mounts at the rear. They actually have a small, uh, well, it's a 15 degree downwards thrust angle now. Uh, I noticed looking back at the footage from yesterday that when I increase the thrust at the rear, it seemed to want to push the nose down quite hard. So I'm hoping that this sort of downwards thrust angle will go slightly more through the centre of mass and uh, sort of push the rear down a bit more. So um, now the sun's coming out, let's give it a test.
So it seems like the nose pitching down issue um, has reduced. If I can pick up a bit more speed, the uh, the flipping over issue is, uh, I think, unresolvable apart from my lack of piloting skills. <laughs> um, just to give you an idea of the command effect actually working, I'm going to throttle up the rear motors without the uh, front ones. Okay, that does actually move it on this uh, soft grass, but if I throttle them up so it's not moving, so it's just about to move, like about there. Now if I throttle up the uh, lift motors and keep the rear ones constant, it reduces the friction and off it goes. We see how fast we can get it going towards me. This could end badly. <laughs> I actually tried to take off. <laughs> I wonder if it will take off if I go fast enough. One interesting thing I've just noticed is that it seems to be collecting all the leaves on the inside. Um, so I wonder if that's the coanda effect, blowing air all the way around the surface and then filling this with high pressure air, which is also picking up lots of debris on the floor. <laughs> I, uh, I've covered all the electronics in packing tape so that it should be waterproof because it's quite wet on the grass this morning. So many leaves in here. So there we have it, a Coanda Effect hovercraft. Is it going to be replacing conventional hovercrafts anytime soon? I highly doubt it. Does it have any advantages over a conventional hovercraft? Well, aside from collecting leaves, uh, not really. Uh, I really enjoyed this project and I'm really happy that the Coanda Effect actually worked to uh, lift this thing off the ground, sometimes a bit too much. Um, but I hope you found this project interesting. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, then it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up down below. And if you're new to my channel and want to see other crazy projects sim similar to this, it'd be great if you could click subscribe down below. And a massive thank you to all of my supporters over on patreon.com for supporting my projects and these videos and making things like this possible. So thanks once again for your support. Thanks once again for watching and see you in the next video. Roll the outtakes.